Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the show. Again, I, I practice the sound. I practice the sound and then I come on and it, I shout. But hello and welcome to VaporTrails.tv and Swaff Confidential with me, Andy Sutton. I'm your host for the next hour. Some of you know me when I used to do shows on Vapor Trails. I'm back. I've got two special shows for you. They are going to feature some behind-the-scenes looks at Swaff. That is Smoke Without Fire, Story of Electronic Cigarette. And that's a crowd-funded documentary that the community got well and truly behind in April 2013. So, without further ado, let's play in the titles, shall we? Okay then. Yes, welcome. It's uh, Saturday, the 21st of December, 2013. It's very nice to have chat here as well. Lovely, lovely. The room's filling up nicely. Thank you very much for spending this Saturday before Christmas with me. And um, I hope everybody's organised before the big ho-ho-ho. I personally am not. I've got uh, some Christmas presents, but need to do a bit more shopping, really. If my kids are watching, obviously, you know, Santa's going to sort you out. Mm. So, let's talk about Swaff, shall we? Why not? Um, basically, a lot of you in chat, but if you're watching this on Catch Up or elsewhere, um, I started the Swaff campaign in April 2013 and um, launched a crowdfunded Kickstarter Thing that allowed us to raise some money to make a film and um, in putting it all together and releasing the serialized videos um, obviously I couldn't get all the footage in uh, I'll get into how much footage it's generated so basically tonight over the next hour or so because there is quite a lot to get through and there's gonna be two shows this show is going to be you know a little bit more relaxed a little bit more sort of um, behind the scenes technical look at some stuff you haven't seen a bit goes into vape fest a bit as well and it's not chronological um i just basically looked at all the footage and pulled out all my video diary stuff because i was shooting video diaries as i went round and yes and and this is the result so i hope you enjoy it if you did pledge i'd like to say thank you very much this has been a fantastic, fantastic experience. Um, it's sort of winding to a close now in terms of the money, um, but I've got the camera now and um, vaping, obviously, and we know what's been going on. I won't talk about that too much because the other shows have covered what's going on and what's what's happening and what we all need to do. That's all being covered on Vapor Trails TV. This is sort of supplementary to that. And um, so, yes. It's great to be amongst friends on VaporTrails.tv again. And uh, let me play in my first VT, um, which is how it all started. The Kickstarter campaign basically was kickstarted by... Um, me being a vapor and um, I was doing reviews and I was on Vapor Trails TV. The draw is very very light and very nice it's the Pro Tank. Now this is from Kanga. I got this uh, from Vaporscape and I could see a story. Um, I've worked in TV for 15 years and I was a vapor for 
three when I started, four now, five next year. Um, so, you know, it just seemed that there were a group of people who were passionate about something that they were doing that was harming them less than what they used to do and the government was trying to take it away. So um, I wrote up in April this year, 2013, I, I wrote up um, the proposal for the Kickstarter campaign, which was basically to release a series of short documentaries that told the story of the electronic cigarette and the fight the vapors were going through, myself being one. Hi, I've got vape mail. I submitted it to Kickstarter, who are basically a group of young creative people who want to enable people with ideas to get their ideas made and out there. And I submitted it to them and it was rejected. That is full on watermelon. So um, they rejected it, but they gave me really good feedback and told me how I should write it to fit in with their criteria. Um, doing that, they accepted it straight away. I also cut a promo video for the top of the page and I'll play that in now. I read an article in New Scientist um, a couple of years ago um, about electronic cigarettes, first I'd ever heard of them. That video was basically made up of footage that I gathered throughout vaping events. These things represent a way to carry on smoking. They represent a middle ground, yeah? Because in the past as a smoker, and I know full well having been one, you would either have to quit using some of those NRT products which have a 93% failure rate, or you'd have to die. And then while, that, while the Kickstarter campaign was sort of ticking along in the background, I also put a shout out on YouTube on my Smoke to Vape channel for people to get their story heard, you know, to tell their vaping story and how the EU ban was going to affect them. If the proposed European revisions are passed, I will no longer be able to use my e-cig. And, and, and for me that was really powerful because everybody was saying the same thing. Hello, my name's Andrew. Hi, I'm Alex in Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, Lee here. Hi, my name's Vincent. I prefer to be called Vinny, actually. Hi there, my name's Matt. I am a vapor. Hiya, Chris again. My name's Paul, and I'm a vapor. My name's Andy, and I use electronic cigarettes. Hi, my name's Lorian. I've been vaping for two years now. I'm here to tell you my story. The next video was the first video that we actually spent some money on. My name's Darren Burns, and I run a company called Safer Cigs, which is an electronic cigarette company based here in uh, Blandford in Dorset. Today we've got a visit from our, our local MP, Bob Walter, who's coming to discuss the um, Tobacco Products Directive with us. It's a, it's a major concern to all vapours. Um, it's the European Parliament want to make a change in the way in which e-cigs are handled within the Tobacco Products Directive, and we want them to basically vote no and represent us in government to uh, voice our concerns to the government. And it was the first MP, um, it was the first shoot. None of us want to go back to tobacco smoking. None of us want to light up cigarettes again. Um, so we hope Bob will go down and convey this message for us and get other MPs, MEPs on side so they will, when the vote comes up for the Tobacco Products Directive, they'll vote now. It was all organised on Facebook, actually. Darren Daz from Safer Sigs uh, put up that Bob was going to visit the shop and I messaged him on the instant chat thing. I said, uh, your MP visit, can I film it? And he came back and said, yes, but I'll check with the PR office. If these get taken away from us, I just go down the shop and I buy a pack of cigarettes. Mm. And then I start mm. the process again of, of, of smoking tobacco cigarettes. So how, how, does, uh, how do you actually get your fix? And what, what, how does the, this liquid get into a consumer? What, what does it do? Is it, okay, it, the, the, it, take, it takes power. Yeah. Inside here, we've got a coil, a little heating coil. Right. Okay. And that's powered up from the battery. Yeah. That heats up the liquid. Yeah. And turns it into a vapor. I see. So and it turns it into a vapor. If I demonstrate, if I press and hold the button. Yeah. Bob Walter didn't know a great deal about electronic cigarettes or or, or where we were coming from as vapors, so it was really interesting. And, and and Darren did a really great job of of telling him what the ban on electronic cigarettes was going to do to his customers 
and him as a vapor. Because let's not forget, vendors are, are also vapors. Also, what that shoot meant to me was the fact that the footage that I was looking at, it was the first footage that we'd got in and it was really quite emotional to see that footage coming in, looking at it and thinking, this project has well and truly started. So there we go. Yes, the, um, the first video that we spent some money on, as I said, and uh, I'll, I'll echo what I said in the video. I've wanted to make films for as long as I can remember. I've been editing other people's stuff for years. Um, as I said, I've been in TV for like 15 and putting the Kickstarter thing together and then having a group of people who believed the same thing I did get behind what I wanted to do was very special and um, seeing that footage seeing an MP in an e-cig shop was really important at that stage um, we've sort of got used to it now because because uh, of our action behind the scenes you know on Twitter and stuff like that and, and raising awareness so um, yeah it, it, it was a, it, a great shoot um, that was shot by a, a guy that I work with in on a, a project that I did for Bournemouth University a guy called Ben and he was a Bournemouth guy and I, I again Facebooked him and said you know do you fancy shooting something for this documentary project that I'm I'm doing and uh, he went along there and 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 shot the hell out of it and it was really good <laughs> it was really good anyway so moving on on to the next little bit oh and the eagle-eyed amongst you in chat before the show uh, we do a little pre-show before we go live and uh, someone asked if the fluffy cover comes off my microphone there it is nude it's nude for you uh, i did find another use for it though and um <laughs> works quite well now that doesn't look like a cigarette does it no does that normalize sound recording probably <laughs> Running a bit low on juice, so I'll refill during the next VT. And the next VT is about the the a shoot that I had to drive a great distance to go to, um, well Bristol to London basically, and um, and the traffic was terrible and the weather was rainy, and uh, as you'll see in this video, the catering was pretty bad as well. But that's at the end. Um, let's play in the next video, which is just here. And I think we'll all agree as vapors, uh, he's he, the guy in this video has become a, a firm favorite of ours and somebody that we, we think a lot of. So here we go. Hello Swaffers, Andy here. I am currently behind the steering wheel and so is the camera. Um, I am on my way to London to meet with a Mr. Clive Bates, a very experienced gentleman when it comes to government policies. And he is also a, a big supporter of the electronic cigarette movement. So today is well and truly a swath day. The weather is pulling out all the stops. And um, just a massive thank you to everybody who pledged to the Kickstarter because you're making this possible. You know, I can get in my car with my camera and drive on out and um, these are just going to keep on happening, these sort of days. And what with the MHRA's proposed legislation on e-cigs, turning them into medicines, Swaff is going to be very busy documenting every angle of this story. And if you've got a story that you think I should come and visit you and talk about, do get in touch. So thanks for watching. I'm Andy. It's Motivate. Swaff campaign. Keep on vaping. Well, the World Health Organization should be seizing on e-cigarettes and championing them as the most incredibly important disruptive public health technology that there has been since the inven invention of antibiotics or vaccines. It's potentially a huge development in one of the most important issues that they deal with. The problem is they've gone in exactly the opposite direction. They've seen it as a threat. 
They've seen it as a conspiracy by the tobacco industry. They've seen it as um, diverting people from quitting nicotine completely. Whereas actually, if they're interested in health, the thing that they should be bothered about is cancer, heart disease, emphysema, bronchitis, uh, all the terrible things that smoking does to people, none of which will apply to e-cigarettes or frankly to smokeless tobacco either. And they've set themselves against both of those. It's a disgrace, it's a perversion of their mission. They need to reassess what they're doing, rethink completely and get behind harm reduction. Just completed the Clive Bates interview. Uh, it took me about three hours to get out of London because uh, of the traffic. And now, the glamorous world of filmmaking. It's sitting in a car park. I'm just about to eat my dinner. Uh, it's about half eight. For a starter, couscous, not couscous, hummus and uh, carrots. For main course, I've got some sort of pasta, chicken, basil thing. And for dessert, I've got strawberries. Mm. Yeah, the interview was very good. It was very good. Um, the interview is at the moment in the camera bag, in the camera. Uh, I did check all the footage through just before I left and it's looking good. I'm going to eat my dinner. The people next to me, in the car next to me, looking like I'm looking at me like I'm a nutcase. So uh, uh, I'm probably going to turn the camera off now. Ah, <sighs> So that, that reinforces the glamour of what I'm doing at the moment. Eating mouldy carrots in a car park. Right, so I'm going to eat my dinner. Um, good interview, good swath day. Traffic was a nightmare. Carrots are mouldy. Anyway, so... Um, all good. See you soon. Yeah, some very interesting comments in chat. Um, obviously echoing our thoughts about Clive Bates. Absolute, a great person to have on our side. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. There's more of that interview next week to come. That I haven't, I haven't managed to fit in any videos, so there's a lot more of that. Um, in terms of showing up it was it was quite a, an arduous journey there and an arduous journey back but the results were fantastic and uh, it was a pleasure to spend some time with him um and another thing um you might have seen on a previous show that uh clive also sticks up for snooze rightfully so you know smokeless tobacco um and a, a friend of mine at work um went to sweden and he, he brought me some back and uh, quite a while ago now um it's got quite a questionable name um, it's, uh, it's, it's that, yeah. Uh, but I, I suppose it's just a brand name and it probably translates to something lovely, but here it means like something different anyway. But, um, yes, uh, again, band. So Clive doesn't like that either and uh, the fight continues and we will be talking to Clive some more for other SWAT videos as well in the future. So um, in chat I noticed someone said that there's no justice in the world, um, they ban e-cigs but you can still buy hummus. See it's all about choice, it's all about availability and freedom to choose. If you want couscous you can have couscous, if you want hummus you can have hummus. If you want an e-cig we should be able to have an e-cig. So yes, right, that probably takes me up to my first ad break. Check me out with a run order on two little pieces of paper. <laughs> so yes, let's go to the ad break. And then after that, I'll be in another car park. How lovely. Yes. And I did see the comments about car park activity as well in chat. And um, I've got a story about that. That happened when I was a student. No, maybe that's a different show. Anyway, um, yes, let's. <laughs> that, that, that sounded a bit more... Maybe I should explain after the break. Shall I explain the... Uh, uh, let's go to the break. iVapor and iVapor Elixir proudly sponsors Swath Confidential. 
nice. Okay, okay, chat are going crazy about the car park related story when I was a student. Okay, here goes. I'm a student, I'm driving from Farnham to Southampton, back home where I used to live, and I was going to university in Farnham, and uh, in Surrey, and uh, I, it was dark, and um, I pulled over into a lay-by to roll a cigarette, because I was smoking then, and I had a rolling tin. And so I switched the light on, I put it in the rolling tin, I closed the thing, I switched the light off, the cigarette rolled off the rolling tin, fell into the footwell, I sort of scrambled around a bit, turned the light back on, could, scrambled around some more, turned the light back off, put it in my mouth, fell out of my mouth, and it fell back down again. So I turned the light back on again, switched, picked it up, turned it off, lit the cigarette, the lighter wouldn't work, had to, it was a Zippo, so I had to switch the light back on again, fill the, the, the stuff up, fill the, fill the lighter fluid, put the lighter back together, turn the light off, light the cigarette, and then started the car. I look up, and the car in front, its light is flashing on and off. I had no idea what was going on. In my mind, I thought somebody needed help. So, so I drove up to the car that was flashing the lights. I was in a little bronze coloured Nissan Micra and um, looked into the car and there were two naked people in there looking very happy to see me and being a young 19 year old I drove off very fast scared back home to my mother <laughs> that's my that's my uh, car park dogging story oh. not really behind the scenes of swath but that shows the sort of situations I go, I get into. Would you like to see another video that starts with me in a car park? Why not? Yes, where are we going? We're going to, um, this time I was in a car park, uh, about to go to Esig Wizard. Oh, th thank the Lord for run orders, that's all I can say. Um, I've just got to say, Skype chat and chat, they, you like that story. I've got many of those stupid stories as well, but but, you know. It's not really vaping related. Well, it's sort of smoking related. Anyway, I'm in a car park in this next video. I'm on my way to eSig Wizard. Oh, anyway, here we go. Here we are. Let's get over to eSig Wizard. Right, um, we're just about to go in the clean room, um, so having to wear a hat and um, coat and, and shoe things. Ben's not allowed in there because he's got a cold at the moment, but um, I'm going to have to put the camera down to put my booties on. <laughs> Okay, so we're in the uh, the warehouse at the moment, so 
Uh, this is where all the mass storage is and all the, the orders are picked. Uh, initially we started off in a, in a tiny unit rented month by month uh, to the point where we had to, to rent four of them and we'd knock down every wall leading to them uh, to make one big unit but it became, uh, it became ridiculous. We had boxes stacked to the roof, you could barely move in it so we decided to, to move into a bigger unit and now we've got a 10,000 square foot uh, warehouse with offices uh, and we've recently finished the build on the clean room that we've extended. Every, everything we do is to make sure everything is of the highest quality. We purchase our nicotine from authorised MHRA companies in the pharmaceutical market. So the ingredients that we put in our e-liquid are actually already approved as raw ingredients. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, Andy here. I'm on the road with Swaff, and I'm in a hotel. And if you look behind this curtain, you will see it's dark, it's night time. And the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice also that that's Tamworth, home of Vapefest. I'm here tomorrow, I'm here today, tonight, but tomorrow I'm filming um, a, an MEP who is quite supportive of electronic cigarettes and uh, we're gonna have a chat. So that's tomorrow's video. Today was eSig Wizard, I was in Peterborough and um, I bought some stuff from the eSig Wizard shop. That, a Tesla, one of their disposables and a starter kit. Woohoo, hello. And um, I'm going to show the MEP these devices tomorrow and he can have a look at them and clearly see that they don't necessarily all like cigarettes. I'm also going to, um, I've got loads of questions for him. I'm going to grill him and um, see what he says. Um, I've also picked up some stickers, some e-cigs save live stickers, which I'm going to give to him. So uh, yeah, there we go. That's what's happening. That's what's occurring. On the laptop, you will see Ben from EC Wizard. Interviewed him for about an hour today. Gave me a tour of the impressive warehouse and the whole setup there. Met the whole team. Lovely bunch. And um, pressing on. Um, I'm, I've got everything I need to edit the video. I've just had a pizza. I've got a Coca-Cola over there. I don't have to meet the MEP until midday tomorrow. So I'm going to keep going into the night working on this video. So then, by the time I get back home on Friday, it should be ready to go up. Anyway, so that's the plan. Uh, I had a couple of interesting emails. Um, I will be, and um, another crew as well, will be at Vape Fest. Not this weekend coming, but next weekend. So that's good. Uh, two crews, and we will also be having a video booth, which people who attend can go in and vent their spleen about the situation. I just figured with 2,000 people at the Vape Fest, it was a good opportunity to, you know, some people when you ask them to be interviewed, they, they get a bit nervous and they don't want to be seen doing it. So what we've done is we're going to provide a soundproof photo booth, basically. So you can go in there and say whatever you want, get it off your chest, and you can either direct it to your MEP and we will then forward it onto them or we'll put a video together of everybody's thoughts and it's going to be great. So if you're planning to come to Tamworth and planning to go to the Vape Fest, that video booth is there to use and abuse all day. So if you have a thought or if you have a question for an MEP or you want to make get your point across, dive in the booth and get it done. Um, and then we'll get the footage, put it all together and then make it available to everybody on YouTube so that's the plan that's the plan I also had confirmation from a doctor today I'm going to interview a doctor over the next sort of week week and a half so that's good um, I've also there was a video posted on Vimeo a couple of days ago that had some great people talking in it and the people who released that video have given Swaff permission to use that video so that's also very positive some great stuff was said in that video it also shows that um, our fight is getting out there to the wider sphere. So yes, so there we go. Um, I've got to charge some batteries both for the camera and for my e-cig. So this is Andy in Tamworth signing off. Good night.
Oh, you guys in chat still talking about the car park thing. <laughs> yeah, I must admit it was funny when I look back on it. And um, yeah, anyway, eSig Wizard, great guys, looked after me, had lots to say. We had a long chat as well, as I said in that. And uh, yes, uh, there's also there's a lot more from a lot of these interviews, but obviously in behind the scenes sort of making uh, the longer film. Um, now, a lot of people have been asking when that is going to be released. There are a couple of things that I'm waiting to happen, which will accentuate the impact it has. And those things have to happen before it can be released. And I could release it at the moment, but I just want it to be as good as it can be. And I realise that time is of the essence to re release these things but I'll go back to my point of supersize me um, a long form film which has a reception that makes an impact I think is a, a good plan to have I will still be doing the short videos and um, this is part of the reason why I wanted to do this is just to demonstrate that there's a lot more stuff there's a lot more to this um, and I'm having meetings with people in TV talking about how how it could sort of evolve into what it's going to end up being. But until I reach those things, then I, 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 I don't think it would be fair to the people who put their money to it to release something that is not what it can be. I want it to be as, as impactful, if that's a word, it is now, um, as possible. Um, you know... So that's that's my that's my sort of uh, working ethic behind this. So there we are. Yes. And you guys are yeah, can and Oscars await. Well, you know, strange things have happened and um here's to here's to that, really. <laughs> um there is uh, you know, looking at all this stuff, looking at the story that we've got, looking at what's going on now, um it all adds to the story and it's a very powerful thing. A group of people who are, who have found something that's that's changed their lives, that's that means a lot to them. They, we, I, fighting for it. Um, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again. We're the bloody Ewoks, and look what they did. Anyway, anyway, I'll get off my high at at, and move on. So, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, funny story about another one because you said you like those funny stories that join things together, and I'm going to run over. I think. Mm. Sorry, cat. Sorry, Sab. Sorry, Daz. Um, but we'll see how we get on. Um, just another little quick one in that car that that got that sort of bronze-coloured micro. I was driving again back from <laughs> back from Farnham, and I drove in. No, I didn't. Um, this was. This was a couple of years later after the, 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 the dog in car park thing. And uh, I was driving with my girlfriend in the passenger seat and I had the hiccups. And I was hiccuping and um, I was just driving along. And uh, suddenly my lovely girlfriend started. I can say my lovely girlfriend because my girlfriend is now my wife. See, see what I did there? Um. I was hiccuping and then suddenly Sue started just she screamed at me right here ah! and I was swer suddenly swerving all over the road and went off the road and ended up in a ditch and as we stopped and 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 I said what's the matter she went how's your hiccups cured Anyway, so that's probably the last... Mi is there another... No, there's another micro story, but that'll be... Uh, where are we? We. Um, oh, guess what? You join me in another car park in the next VT. It's a theme. Um, yes, this car park, I'm about to meet... I'm in Tamworth again. It's like vaping headquarters, Tamworth, uh, to talk to Mr. Benyon. And um, some escapades occurred in the hotel. Right, I'm off to interview 
Phil Benyon, MEP in Tamworth. Um, I've left my mark on that room. I stuck a uh, e -Cig Saves Lives sticker on the, uh, the room window. Third floor up, just above the door you walk into reception, the Tamworth Holiday Inn Express, if you look on the third window up, just above the door. Hopefully, when I come back for Vape Fest, I'll be able to check it out. Could you just tell me what you have for breakfast? Um, muesli. Lovely. <laughs> okay, could you just first introduce yourself, which party you're rep you, and you represent and, and the area in which you do that? Yes, I'm uh, Philip Benyon, Member of the European Parliament for the West Midlands for the Liberal Democrats. Great stuff. Okay. And when did you first find out about electronic cigarettes? Oh, two or three years ago. Um, my, uh, some of my local activists uh, took to e-cigarettes and so I've been aware of their, their benefits for mm, at least three years, I should say. Great stuff. Great stuff. Okay. Now, Linda, Linda McAvan, Matt McAvan. Yes. Um, she seems hell bent on making e cigs medicines. Now, are you aware of what medicinalisation of e cigs would do to, do to the market and the people who use them at the moment? Um, I'm certainly aware of some of the, uh, of, of the, of the implications. Um, it would mean that they would only be supplied through pharmacies, for one thing, which uh, uh, would take them out of the normal retail outlets. And I would imagine also that they will need different levels of, of uh, authorisation. Um, they would need some sort of licensing, which could cause them a delay, a, a delay in withdrawal from the market for, for a period. In medicinalising it, it would take it out of the hands of most. And I've got one here, and you can yes. clearly see that that doesn't look very much like a cigarette. And if it, if it won't trigger any smoke alarms. Let no. me, have you seen one used? Uh, I've got one on my desk in Brussels, but I <laughs> haven't got anything quite as uh, uh, monstrous as that well, contraption is, that is, you're using there. <laughs> this is just a demonstration. This is just a demonstration of what, of yes. what they do. Now you can see there, that is 36 milligram nicotine liquid. Yes. I've been using these for four years and I don't consider it that I've quit smoking. I've switched to a, a better form of nicotine, taking nicotine on board. I'm still a happy addict of nicotine. It's my choice. Like red <laughs> wine is, is, is somebody's chosen drug. Yes, yes. Mine, for instance. Exactly, exactly. So, so all we're saying, do you agree that people have the right to be... Yes. Nicotine addict? Yes, I, I, I do. I'm, a, I'm, I'm not a uh, prohibitionist. And uh, like many in my party, I'm not a prohibitionist. I'm not a prohibitionist for alcohol or nicotine or in fact even for tobacco. Uh, if, but if people want to try to uh, kick the, uh, the, the tobacco habit because of the, uh, the number of carcinogens in, to, in tobacco, I think that we should make every avenue possible available to them. The vote didn't go our way on the 10th. No, what, what, what can you say to vapors to, to try and get this message across? Yes, well I think you have to campaign across Europe with the European political parties. Our Liberal group in the Parliament, we had a debate on this in our group meeting uh, prior to the vote in the Environment Committee and we were absolutely solidly behind uh, keeping e-cigarettes available in normal retail outlets. So we voted very solidly in the same way and we will do again when it comes to the plenary. Now you've got the plenary vote coming up so uh, I think what has to be done now is you have to convince those in the other political groups that uh, we're right, they're wrong, and get them to switch their votes. So there we are, Mr. Benyon. Um, very, very nice man. Um, and let me just uh, clear up something as well that... Uh, I mentioned muesli at the beginning of that. And that wasn't just me asking him a random question. I was testing the microphone. It's normal to ask people what they had for breakfast or ask them some random question just to make sure the levels are right. I'm going to show off some of my cameras. Uh, there you go. I've got new cameras. They're, they're all over the place. I can go over here and over here. 
So I'm all set up. So um, this is just going to stay put. I've got nobody visiting um, over the Christmas period because that normally means that I've got to break the studio down because this is, believe it or not, I know it looks like a fully functioning studio, <laughs> but this is the spare bedroom. So, yes, um, let me switch over to this. And, uh, yeah, so Phil was very nice. Um, there was one moment that he, he got a little bit defensive of a question I asked him that was, uh, I, I said, do we have your support? Um, and he took that as m me saying, you haven't supported us yet. And, and he got a little bit, um, not agitated, but a little bit, uh, his tone changed. Um, and he, he was right. He, he, you know, the Liberal Democrats did stick up for us in the EU. That was great. Um, some see their their claiming what's happened recently as a victory not quite the same way and i think that is the point of the all the stuff that's going on at the moment um with with the the meats so um it's important for us as a community and us as vapors to voice as as to why we didn't see what happened last week as a as a victory um, because I, for one, who enjoy refillable devices and I'm currently topping up my rebuildable atomizer, which holds much more than the, the, the restrictions that they're going to impose with 36 milligram e-liquid that's flavoured. You know, why we don't see that as a victory. Anyway, so that is uh, something that I'm obviously developing to get into the end of the big film. And uh, yes, so there we go. Uh, do I have time for just one more micro-related story? Let's give it a go. Um, I was driving again back from Farnham. It's like a haunted road. It's like a, a cursed road for this micro. But it was I had a lot of mishaps in this micro. Um, I wasn't in the car park, but I was driving home. I was on my own. It was day. It was sort of evening time during the summer, and uh, driving along, driving along, and uh, the bonnet flips up, and I end up in a hedge bit quicker that one but still ends up with me being in a hedge and in a ditch anyway so there you go <sighs> right okay i think that takes me up to the um end of part whatever part this is what part is this it's the uh, here's the next brake bumper i vapor and i vapor elixir proudly sponsors off confidential. Nice. Welcome back, lovely people. Um, yes, Chatter talking about my misfortune in hedges. <laughs> it's very true. Lots of my stories end with me being in a hedge. None of the swath ones, though, so that's quite useful. No, no hedges. No hedges. There was a lot of footage, though, and that's my next little VT. And um, uh, the swath so far uh, has generated 6.2 terabytes of data. And that's all thanks to the people who gave their hard-earned cash, and there were some lovely comments from chat about, um, you know, they've spent a lot of money in their life. That was my favourite one. Um, you know, they've spent a lot of money in their life, but they'll never regret giving it to Swaff, and that means so much to me. I can't thank you enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm grateful. Thank you. So, um, yeah, 6.2 terabytes of data we've made together. It's amazing. 
That is the equivalent of half a million phone books of data. Can you tell I've done a little bit of research? Um, and also, the human brain holds a lot of information. We've, crea we've created together the SWAF campaign for brains worth. Mm. That's not, that doesn't sound, but brains hold a lot of information. Four brains worth. Four humans, human beings worth of data. Anyway. And then next to that, I've written the word muesli. So that was... A... <laughs> My brain, some would argue, doesn't quite hold that much information. But, you know, it's all about throughput with me, not retention. Which is why I have to write everything on pieces of paper. So, my uh, penultimate videotape piece. Um, we've done the ad break. That's done. Check. Uh, the next piece is all about the edit. Wrangling that data into some semblance of a story and a sort of uh, thing that then is put onto the internet or saved away for later use. Um, it's fair to say, and I have had uh, quite a few comments from Twitter and everything, it's very difficult for people to understand the process of editing. And editors live a pretty strange existence, mostly in car parks and hedges. Um, no, uh, in, in small dark rooms, looking at footage for days on end. And to give you an idea, for a half an hour television programme, like the one that I've just finished for BBC Two, um, we had six weeks to edit half an hour. Now, th that one program didn't generate as much data as SWAF has. So it, it may just sound like I'm taking my time. <laughs> but honest, honestly, um, it is a very time-consuming project, project, pr pr process. And um, there's also... Uh, the, a good example of the legal, 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 it's good rum. Um, the, the, the legal problems um, associated with some of these shoots, uh, the eSig Summit is, is one of those videos that I would love to put out, but there are a lot of people speaking in it and it wasn't an open event. It was a, a, an invite only. And all those people have the right to say yes or no to include their their speech, including people that I would love to have just put out there. But um, SWAF then and SWAF now certainly cannot afford to get anything wrong legally. So we have taken advice. You might, If you follow me on, on Facebook, you might see that I put a question out there to all my media friends. And uh, it was a resounding, you need to get permission the 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 reason i put that up was because certain people who we had filmed that i am very keen to include see where i am going here uh, will will not respond to our request for inclusion into the film um those people some of those those people did give us interviews um and they are being edited and put together in a, in a way and they did consent to those interviews but it's the larger sort of volume of the eSig summit that I want to include but we are uh, we I am chasing that at the moment so anyway so that is all part of the editing process it's juggling it's trying to get people's permission to use stuff and uh, here's a little sort of video that tries to well it just shows you about the editing it doesn't go into any of that but um it's got some stuff from Vapefest and uh yeah and some uh, video diary things that I'd forgotten that I'd shot. It's been quite a nice sort of experience to go through all this this footage. It's uh, reminded me of the journey, as we say in the media. Right, so let's play in this. This is uh, about uh, videotape. <laughs> here welcome to my edit suite this is obviously not my edit suite at home it's far too nice for that um, but this is my edit suite at work this is where I spend most of my time um, obviously as most of us do at work but um, 2013 really has been a, a challenging year in terms of running the Kickstarter campaign and working because when I leave work, having edited all day, often I've been home and then edited some SWAF videos, which I've absolutely loved doing, but it did take its toll. 
Hello everybody, it's Saturday the 11th of May and just a little bit of an update. You might be able to hear with my voice and if you've seen my previous video diaries from the week earlier that um, I have got a bad cold. I would class it as a flu but my wife is saying that I've got a cold. So for anybody that doesn't know, editing, video editing, involves taking a whole load of rushes, which is the, the filmed material, and um, cutting them down to what you see in the finished film. There are lots of processes though before that can happen. Um, the media has to obviously be filmed, the media has to then be transferred physically on something to me, then I have to copy it onto the system and then I cut it all down. It's a very long-winded, boring process basically, but it's very, very important because no longer do we film on tapes. So you don't have a physical thing with the footage on it. It all exists on a little card that you, you, you have to use over and over again. And then it's wiped. And then the only copy of that media is on a hard drive that you have backed up. So um, we haven't had, and I hate saying this, I'm going to touch fake wood, but we haven't had any media mishaps. Nothing has gone missing. Um, we've had a couple of other mishaps. Morning, um, Andy here. I'm in the Travel Inn in Tamworth. Uh, it's the morning of the Vape Fest. I got in at 2 o'clock yesterday morning. Um, it's now 5 to 8 in the morning. I'm just about to stick all my stuff in the car and head on over to the Moat House. Um, excited for the day. But um, I've got to say, last night, um, my, my cameraman, um, Andy Marsh, uh, emailed me saying that he's broken down. So he didn't arrive to the hotel until God knows when last night. And um, this morning I get a voicemail from the video booth people who say they've broken down as well. This is the joys of uh, making a film like this. Uh, I said to Andy he can arrive um, half an hour before the uh, venue opens. Um, so I'm going to head off and uh, get everybody setting up their stalls. So I was trying to think, okay, how can I film this on my own? Fingers crossed it's all going to come good because at the moment we're a video booth down and we've got a very tired second camera. <laughs> um, but luckily... <laughs> Andy Marsh turned up a little bit late, but he didn't miss anything because I was shooting. Uh, the video booth arrived at about 11, which was fine because everybody by then had been in the tent and, and seen everything they wanted to see. And uh, he got it set up and, and it went great. Got some great stuff. Okay, great. And um, when that comes to an end, it gives you a little message with your logo on saying, yeah. uh, thank you for your message, you now may now leave the booth. Fine, and this is, this is really about... doing it? That is really doing it. Okay, all yeah. right. Perfectly safe for me. So whatever you're thinking of doing in the EU, do not. You just got to get it right. You got to get these things right. No, leave our e-cigarettes alone. So yeah, that was really the only. I'm sure more will come to me through the process of uh, recalling it, but that was pretty much the only cock up in the whole um, thing. So when I came to thinking about filming the Vape Fest, I wanted it to get the scale across. We didn't have the money to hire in like a, like a crane, a camera crane. So I came up with a sort of impromptu rig. I bought um, a 90 quid waterproof tiny little bullet camera um, and then went onto Amazon and bought a, a, like, a, a, like a really long um, window cleaning pole. Um, these cameras are meant to be mounted on helmets, so you get sort of a point of view shot. That's what they're meant to do, but um, I stuck it on this pole and then walked around the vape fest with it. I did get some very, very strange looks, um, but I tested it out in the garden. <laughs> Thank you.
And got some quite interesting footage. And I, and I hope you agree that um, pretty good. You got the scale of the event across. You could see all the people, all the vapors standing in the in the in the garden. And I even walked around the tent. And um, they're some of my favourite shots in the whole thing, really. What's that hooked up to? Is that, is that Wi-Fi to something else? It can be, but I'm just guessing. And really, that, that cost in total sort of like, you know, 110 quid. Whereas, you know, we wouldn't even get an hour with a, a crane for that sort of money. So I was really happy with how it turned out. Here we are. Cool, huh? Little camera on a stick. Um, as I said, some of my favourite shots in the film, really, you know, whizzing it around. And uh, it was very, uh, it was quite amusing to um, watch people's reaction <laughs> to this pole cam. You know, they were uh, rushing around and, you know, and then this thing would come down and sort of uh, get a close up. And yeah, it's a very interesting funny footage um that will be fe i'll put a little comp together of uh of, of that stuff uh somebody was asking in chat who's asking it's whizzed off the off the screen um it is uh, i can't it, we, I, I was watching and it has disappeared now but someone asked what camera is it and it's um an ion um it's an ion i o n and other cameras are available but this one's cheaper than the other one which is the known brand um, and I went for the really, uh, I got it off eBay. It was um, uh, the the version one of it. But from what I could see, it did HD and it looked like it was going to do the business. And it did. And uh, there we are. So that's movie making on the cheap, really. So uh, as I said in that, you know, 100 quid was spent on that around about there. Um, I'm just being told that I'm about to run over, but. I, I, yeah, I've got one more VT, and then then I'm done. Honest, honest, gov. Yes, um, yes. So uh, yeah, it's uh, an ion. What's it called? It's blue, and it's uh, waterproof. Good little camera. Good little camera. So um, yes, how are we doing? Fifty-seven. Well, actually, I, I'll I'll save this next VT till next week. <laughs> what a tease! What a tease! Um, let me just check. Let me just check. Yes, that should be fine. That should be fine. So what I'm going to do now is play the trailer in um, that I, I released last week. Um, and uh, hopefully that will show you, you know, what what the, the, the larger film's going to be. And having seen some of what's gone into making that and getting the footage in and, and doing all the stuff that's got to be done, hopefully you'll watch this with different eyes because you've probably seen it before. But um, here's the trailer. The more cigarettes you smoke over a longer period of time, the more risk you take of harming your body with a vascular disease of every kind and cancers of many different types. Just at the end of the bar, we have what appears to be a lot of people smoking, but in fact it's just electronic cigarettes. So it's, it's like smoking, but it's just vapour, really. No tobacco or that. It's healthy smoking. <laughs> the electronic cigarette community is a really inspiring and unique phenomenon. It's the most incredible thing I've ever known. The problem is, and here is where the problem lies, everything that's on the market now, within 21 days, it's got to be off the shelves. Because it looks like smoking and it's designed to provide pleasure to people, it therefore must be a bad thing. These would be outlawed. I want to win today. We've got to win today. Because e cigs save lives! I think banning them is ridiculous. I think they're banning it because they're getting no revenue from it. This legislation is now being, is now being pushed through at a fast rate. Our fear is that there is a time delay in health consequences. Just like with cigarettes, it might take decades before we see the health damage. In the effort to protect health and safety, you've actually made things worse. 
The tobacco industry generates profits of over 3 billion euros per year in Europe alone. Tobacco companies see that profit disappearing as a result of the introduction of e-cigarettes. My argument continues to be, if I can go and buy 40 cigarettes, why on earth can't I buy an e-cigarette? It's completely ludicrous. So there we go, and you saw a little thing for the website. They're, all the films are on the website, and I was looking at the wrong camera. And uh, yes, so there we are. Um, I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do next week is I'm gonna go slightly. I'm gonna. I've got a lot more MP visits to go through, and I'm gonna try and get one of the cameramen who shot them to sort of recount what what what, what the atmosphere was like and all that sort of stuff. And I'm gonna do that via Skype, hopefully. But it is the Christmas period. So, thank you very much for joining me. I shall see you next weekend. Um, and uh, have a lovely Christmas. Yay! But your Vapor Trails week is not over because tomorrow, Sunday, 9 o'clock, Mr. Kitson will have his overflowing Christmassy box of joy for you. And um, yes, it's been a pleasure to be back. It's been great. It's been fantastic to hang out with chat. And if you're watching this on demand, you should tune in live. It's great fun. Anyway, so thank you so much. I'm going to go and finish my rum and uh, I hope you have a very restful Christmas and I hope Santa brings you everything you wanted. And uh, yes, so thank you very much for tuning in and I will see you soon. Where are the credits? Here they are. Bye. iVapor and iVapor Elixir proudly sponsors Swath Confidential. Nice.